Charlie and I are very excited to be here today. Google cares so much about data and insights. They sent two of us all the way from San Francisco to be here today to talk to you. And that's because, as Melanie said and as Sarah said, uncovering meaningful human insights is really the key to building brand love and connecting with your audience. Digital consumers are constantly telling us what's, what they need, what they want, those, their intentions. And Google has become a database of all those consumer wants, needs, and intentions. And we fundamentally, as a company, believe in the value of data and research because all business decisions should be able to be made with hi highly actionable and valuable data. And it should not be exclusive to brands with big budgets or research staff or brands that can wait months and months for research to come back about their consumers. So today, we're gonna to talk about a few tools that you can start using immediately to invest in your brand and think about what insights and data are gonna be meaningful to move your consumer and your brand forward. Awesome, thanks, Char. So yes, we did come all the way from San Francisco. That said, we have 30 minutes. So we wish that we could deep dive into everybody's brands and share some insights, but we'll try to do for the next 30 minutes as Char said, we'll try to arm you with the tools that can help you uncover data and the questions you can ask to turn that data into insights. And hopefully we can inspire you with some brand examples of brands that have done this really well and they've found those insights that everybody gets excited about and they want to run into the meeting room and share because they're the linchpin behind the next big marketing campaign. And we have been beautifully, beautifully teed up by Melanie as she talked about knowing her audience and, and using those insights understanding from herself as a consumer. So hopefully we can do that in the next 30 minutes for you. Yesterday, we heard from Matt from the London Strategy Unit, and he said something that really resonated with me, and I jotted it down immediately, and last night reproduced it on this slide for you. <laughs> he said that brands are valuable because they simplify and they accelerate decision making. They simplify and they accelerate decision making. And so I was thinking, why is that? Why are really good brands able to do that? And it's the brands that are really leaned in and they're listening to their consumers and then they're acting quickly and they're being very nimble in response to what they're hearing. And so I should clarify what I mean when I say they're listening to their consumers because I don't actually mean they're listening to what consumers are saying and whispering in their ear because I think that we all know these things in life. It's not what people say, it's what they do. I think my dad told me that about boyfriends when I was about 16. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you to figure out whether or not I listened to that one. But um, as we prepare to talk about insights, let's take a step back and, and ask what an insight is and think about it that way. So there's a beautiful quote from a former chairman of Unilever. And he's, uh, he's part of a company that is incredibly successful in taking consumer psychology, turning it into brand recognition, and then ultimately into revenue from products like Dove, Lipton, Axe Body Spray. So what he says that I love as well is that data makes your briefcase heavy and insights make you rich. So when we think about this, the rich part's obviously true. We know that from their annual numbers that they, they put out. But what does the, the insight piece or the data piece mean? It means that there is so much data out there that we have access to that it can almost weigh us down in a lot of ways. It's, it can become heavy and we don't know how to weave through it. But how we actually do weed through it is the secret to our competitive advantage. So to do that and to weed through that data, which comes in the form of site data, customer data, statistics that we at Google love to put in front of you, all of these things, we have to actually step back, as Melanie was saying, and dial up our curiosity and our intuition as people and as consumers to understand why that data point exists. We can dial up our curiosity as moms, as new dads, new parents, as San Francisco residents, as content creators, as runners, as fashionistas, all of these things that we know because we are these things. And they help us get to the why behind the data point and why it even exists in the first place. And that's what really matters. So I'll give you an example to walk you through this. We all have access to this data point that about 45% of watch time on YouTube in the UK is happening on mobile devices. Got it. Pretty easy. We all know that. 
So we have to step back and think about why this even exists to help us make brand decisions. So when I think about it as a consumer and I reflect, a couple things come to mind. One is that I have not put my phone down all morning. I just put it down for this. You're welcome. It's over <laughs> here. Um, and you probably also have not put your phones down very often, which as Sarah said yesterday, we fully support and we love. So hashtag away, do whatever you want to do. Uh, but I would challenge you to think about how many times you actually looked at your phone today. And the second one is, since I've been here in Dublin, the amount of times that I have looked at my phone, pulled it out, tried to pull up the internet, tried to pull up Facebook, and realized I didn't have an internet connection, is driving me insane, first of all. I think it's driving Char insane, too. Killing me. So we only have our <laughs> Wi-Fi. Uh, but secondly, it's made me hyper aware to how many times I actually do that, just as a habit throughout the day. And it, sometimes it's for information, to try to call an Uber, but sometimes it's because I'm just trying to fill a void and I'm a little bored and I feel like I need to be doing something. And so that's the insight that we're getting at from this data point. And that's what marketers can use for their planning. They're understanding that it's a cultural norm to be consuming information on the go like that. So how do we take that insight and influence our brand planning? We have to ask ourselves questions like, what type of content can I have that I can put in front of a consumer that either solves a problem and answers a need when they're on the go or that they would be entertained enough to consume while they're on the go? And then secondly, and even, even more importantly, what action are they going to be willing to take if they're consuming on the go? They're probably not gonna fill out a form for me. They probably aren't gonna buy something that's incredibly expensive unless they've done it from my brand before. But they might pop in an email address for me. They might consume more YouTube content if I take them to my channel. So being really, really thoughtful about that happen, how that happens can influence our planning. So with that in mind, where do we even begin to access this data? And a really easy place that we recommend starting is Google Trends. How many people here are familiar with Google Trends, have used it before? Awesome, love it. That's what we wanna awesome. hear, perfect. So Google Trends is available to everybody and it'll show you that relevant search data, historically recent trending terms for YouTube search, for Google.com, for Google Shopping, all of these things. And so Shane in his keynote yesterday had this awesome statistic here that marathon running is actually, the, the term marathon is exceeding searches for running shoes. Really interesting for a lot of brands, particularly, particularly athletic clothing companies. So the insight that we pull from this data is that for runners, it's not about the shoes, it's about the marathon. So as marketers, let's talk to them about the marathon and let's trust that the shoes will follow when we talk about what really matters to them. So that's an insight we can draw that might shape our content strategy and our messaging. But you can take that trend and look a little bit further and understand how you can actually shape your distribution strategy as well, which we heard about yesterday, the value of both of those things. So we can look geographically at trends, understand what regions are most popular for marathon running, what regions might need a bit of a different strategy and a little bit of a boost. And then we can start to understand some trending topics and get ahead of the market. Where are the opportunities that we can uncover and be first to market with ideas, be first to market with that value and that message? So I imagine all of you know your brands very, very well. You have burning questions. Some of you might even be on Google Trends right now on your phones, case in point, from what we said earlier. Please feel free. But here's a couple uh, questions and idea starters as you think about where, what kind of information you can find on Google Trends. And I wanna call one of them out here because I find this particularly interesting. I think that we all are very in tune with seasonality for our brands, but Google Trends is really interesting with this unexpected seasonality. So I'll give you an example. Father's Day is coming up in the United States. I fact checked, it's also coming up in Ireland. I asked my friend who's from here. <laughs> and the, it's interesting to see when those searches start for people looking for when Father's Day is. Feel free to jot it down your phone. It's June 21st in the States. I know everybody's panicking right now. So those searches start to spike. And as a brand, we can understand when should we start advertising for Father's Day. But I want to show you something really interesting about those search terms. This is in the US. There is a little blip on the map here on search trends. And this is Mother's Day. 
<laughs> and it's that moment that everybody starts to panic around Mother's Day and wonders when is Father's Day and have I missed it. <laughs> so super interesting, kind of an interesting idea for a campaign, something to get ahead of, that panic moment that we all have. So that unexpected seasonality is pretty interesting. So I'll wrap up by showing you a case study to illustrate all of this. Uh, a brand that we're all familiar with, L'Oreal, was able to use some data they found on Google Trends and use that to turn an insight into an incredible product idea and the first to go to market with it. So that said, how many people, this might be less hands than before, are familiar with ombre hair? Okay, all women, got it, perfect. <laughs> So what we will do, this worked out beautifully, we're gonna invite Melanie up to show what ombre hair is, because she has a little ombre going on, which was perfect. Come on up. So for the men in the audience, ombre hair is this hair trend, which Melanie displays beautifully, where her hair gets a little bit lighter towards the bottom. It takes a lot of technique to do it, can we agree? Yes, Yes, hours. not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much, that was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Melanie. <laughs> Um, but what L'Oreal found is that this, they found on search trends that this was becoming really popular, and then they had an insight where they realized that there was something missing in the market. It's hard to do ombre hair, and no one was able to do it at home, and that's something consumers love. It's a popular product item, these do-it-yourself for hair. So they took that insight, and they turned it into an incredible go-to-market strategy. So let's take a look at what they did. Roll video, please. in the new context of digital. Um, the great thing is that it's easier for the consumer to be even more immediate at the moment of inspiration. My name is Drupi Chamberlain and I'm the VP of Marketing for L'Oreal Paris Hair Color. We started seeing this new look on celebrities and on fashion runways that was the ombre look. So then we turned to search to find out, is the everyday woman knowing about this look? And if so, she's searching for it and how? We saw a considerable rise in search terms for ombre hair or dip dye hair. But what was clearly missing was an application tool, which signaled to us that L'Oreal could come and fill a need in the consumer marketplace to get ombre at home. 50% of the consumers who bought Ombre were new to the category, a huge success. And so it's really building that trust with our brand that we're going to bring those solutions to her every time. We stayed close to the consumer and used our search data really along the whole consumer journey. From the product development stage to what kind of content we were going to serve to her, under what message and in what mediums. We call it marketing nirvana. I mean, if we can find out when is she searching, what is she searching for, and therefore what is the right message to serve her in what medium, I mean, it's really beautiful for everyone. Awesome. So a beautiful illustration of doing that. And the last piece I want to show you is Something else that they used to inform their strategy for going to market was that they used YouTube content creators like Melanie, who they understood were hugely influential to their target audience, and asked them to help users see how to use the, the product and how to apply the, the ombre hair themselves. And what they found was that as a result, there was this wealth of user-generated content being posted of, of consumers doing this themselves which is one of the beautiful things about YouTube. It actually amplified what they had already planned to do. So uh, a beautiful illustration of using data, using your intuition and your curiosity a little bit to find an insight that ultimately shaped an amazing go-to-market strategy for them. So as Carly just highlighted, there's a lot of great examples of brands using data and meaningful insights to shape their go-to-market strategy, their brand message, and how they're connecting with consumers. So Mark covered this a little bit yesterday, and the reason I bring it up today is because fundamentally, marketing hasn't changed in the last 20 years. Brands ultimately need to understand that consumers know you and known for something that you do, like what you do and you make, but they want, you wanna move them up this arc to a place where they're gonna forgive and defend you and become your advocates. And the reason that's so important today is because in the digital age, 
consumers have the ability to amplify your message across so many different platforms and ultimately become your best salespeople. So think about product review sites, YouTube videos, like unboxing videos on YouTube, posting comments and links on Facebook and Twitter. These people are now your advocates and selling on your behalf. The most important thing, though, is where does this data come from? How do we determine where a brand falls along this arc? And that's the interesting piece here, I think, for you all today. Are you familiar with a tool called Google Consumer Surveys? Anybody? OK, a few of you. So this is great. Google Consumer Surveys is an amazing tool that we, we've re recently launched for about the last year or so, maybe a couple of years even now. But what it does is it allows brands to get real-time consumer response data for anything. So think about where you fall along this arc. We can understand your brand awareness, consumers' consideration of you, and even their loyalty of you. And what I'd like you to do right now is think about, if, as a brand, where do you stack up along this arc? It's difficult to move up this arc for any brand. This is actually real life data from a global technology brand. And their target audience, which is adults 18 to 34, fall heavily within this exists or known for something. And that's about 60% of this population. They really, really, as a brand, want to move up this arc. And after seeing this data, have decided to modify their brand message going into the next six months and, and year. So regardless of brand size, the important thing to keep in mind here is that data can constantly tell you where you're at, how you're resonating with consumers, and did your campaign actually resonate? So you can run this before a big launch to understand what kind of messaging should I use? Do we, people even know that I exist? Do they know my product? Do they care about me? How do you want to message that? And then even post-launch, you could see, did you move up this arc at all? Did your marketing dollars really work for you? While Google Consumer Surveys is great for, for brand tracking like that, it's also really, really great to answer some of your more day-to-day -day business needs. And that's where brands find the most success. So for example, if you want to come out with a new product, is there even a market for it? Like the L'Oreal example, they, they definitely found that there was a, a missing piece to the consumer market with this do-it-yourself do hair product. What kind of price are, are your consumers willing to pay? You can find that out really easily. What kind of messaging resonates better with a specific target audience? One consumer might want to hear, uh, you know, one age demographic or, or consumer might want to hear one message from you. Another might, might want another. Additionally, that kind of brand tracking, I think it's really interesting. I've seen brands use this and ask questions to consumers. What, what word comes to mind when you think of X brand? Is it innovation? Is it cheap? Is it fun? What are those words that are resonating with consumers? Additionally, think about when are they using your product and why and how? These are the types of insights among many, many others that you can gather from Google Consumer Surveys. So I want to show you a quick example from Nest. Are you familiar with Nest? Nest is the, the home goods, the home product that Google recently acquired. Um, and they're really using it really well and really effectively to guide their brand messaging and their brand strategy, as well as their product development. So we can go ahead and roll this video and, and take a look. The people that, that come to work here care about their job quite a bit. It's inspiring to be in that environment, and it's a very high level of talent. My name is Alex Bain. I'm a marketing analytics manager at Nest. At Nest, we're reinventing unloved products in the home. We are really focused on delivering a superior customer experience. We do that by trying to understand how people interact with the products in their home. Google Consumer Surveys allow us to extend that focus on people. In the absence of data, it's really easy for everyone to draw on their personal experience, and you don't know if that's really representative or not. Whereas if you can ask 2,000 people what their experience is like and aggregate that, you can really understand what is the answer to an important business question. Within marketing, we run surveys to understand what is our brand awareness. If we're designing a product and we want to make sure that it's going to fit in the right place in the home, we can run surveys to ask, how high is your ceiling? We ran a survey, for example, to understand do couples fight over the temperature in the house? And we wanted to understand, um, are, are our products in the middle of those disputes? 
turns out that it's not actually that common to fight over the temperature in the house, and so it was helpful for us to know that that's not really a concern. When I tried Google Consumer Surveys, I realized how simple it was. By checking a few boxes, you can target the survey, you can have pictures, you can ask for ratings. Within a couple days, the responses have all come back to you and they're weighted appropriately to be representative. It, it couldn't be easier. I went from being sort of intimidated by surveys in general to trying this product and realizing how simple it was to then running around the company uh, and in any meeting I was in saying, you guys understand that we could introduce surveys to this debate and it would just resolve the whole thing. Great. So I think they do an amazing job of not guessing. You don't have to guess anymore. You can use real data to make those meaningful brand decisions and those insights about your consumer. So I'm sure you all want to get started immediately <laughs> with this tool. You have burning questions that you want to know about your brand and your consumer. The great thing about this tool is it's so simple to use and it works, again, in real time. So what happens is you go into go onto Google Consumer Surveys, you get to select what type of questions you want to ask and the format in which you want to do that. You could potentially think about just screening a sample population for your country, or if you want to go a little bit deeper, ask a screening question. So for example, if you, you're interested in what, what moms want to uh, think of you, or maybe tablet owners, you can get that specific and use that as a screening question. Then what happens is once you have that set up, your surveys are sent out across our publisher network, and in exchange for access to locked content, they answer these questions. So it's great for publishers because they're getting more customers on their website without having to them leave and, and pay and, and do all that kind of subscribing that causes sometimes drop off on content. And then brands and consumers get that data back in real time. And then you'll eventually get this, this great interactive tool, which you can edit by age, uh, geographic location, household income, and it's all statistically significant data, and it is, again, in real time, and usually Google Consumer Surveys takes about seven days to get that data back. So it's a really, really quick and actionable <laughs> tool to get those insights about your customer. So where does this exist currently? This is probably the, the key point for you. So right now, it's in the US and Canada. Here in EMEA, it's in the UK, Germany, France, and Spain. It's also available in Australia, Japan, Brazil, and Mexico and there'll be more markets coming online soon. So you can, you can survey customers all across the world and get those real-time response data from anywhere in the globe. You can run this right now, it's about 10 cents per answer. Um, I'd highly recommend that you all talk to your account teams to better understand how you're gonna use this moving forward, What's the, what are the most meaningful insights, take this back to your teams and, and just start testing this. And finally, one final plug, a lot of the data you've seen today and, today and with, over the last day has come from and lives on Think with Google. So if you're not familiar th with this resource, this is my go-to anytime I'm looking for anything new and exciting or inspirational for a brand. It has case studies, it has industry trends, it has research, it has creative examples, it has pretty much anything that you need. And just a quick plug that with Think with Google plus Google Trends plus Google Consumer Surveys, you now have in your pocket three incredible tools that you can start using to help guide your brand strategy, uncover that data, use your curiosity to build those insights and craft a better brand strategy for you and your customers moving forward. So please try these tools. I promise you won't be disappointed and let us know how it goes. Thank you. Thank you. What if you could find that sweet spot where everything is just the way you want it? 
introducing the crossover that gets it all right. The all-new HR...